Okay, in this question, we have a bus and we see that it's traveling at 80 kilometers per hour. It ends up to a speed of 100 kilometers per hour. And we see it took 12 seconds to do that. So let's start putting that into our knowns and unknowns right away. So our V naught, well, that'll be the 80 kilometers per hour. That's the initial velocity. And then we see it gets to a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour. And it took 12 seconds to do that. And what we're looking for is the acceleration. So let's put acceleration is there. And we look at that and think, okay, what other variables are we used to writing down? Um, displacement, let's just double check. Uh, we're not told anything about the displacement that it took to get to that speed change. So we'll just put a question mark there. And in many ways, um, the D, we don't really care about necessarily. If we have to do this in two steps, we might solve for the D. But if we can do it in one step, we could avoid the D altogether and go directly to what we're trying to get. That's the acceleration. So uh, taking a look at our knowns and unknowns, um, the first thing we should note is that we have a bit of a mix of units here. And so kilometers per hour mixed with seconds. So unfortunately, we can't just stick with our kilometers per hour. We should go down to our base units. So let's do a quick conversion there. And uh, make sure you lay out your conversion so uh, it can be seen exactly how you approach that. And we do know 1,000 meters per one kilometer. And we can double check. Kilometers would cancel out and we'd be left with meters on the top. Good, that's what we wanted. And then we have to deal with the hours. So if we have one hour over 3,600 seconds, then we would see that uh, the hour here would cancel out with the hour there and we'd end up with a seconds on the bottom. And so meter on the top, seconds on the bottom, that's what we wanted. So uh, dimensional analysis, we confirmed that we're going in the right direction. So pull out the old calculator. And we can calculate that 80 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. Or if you've done this a few times and you got the pattern, 80 divided by 3.6. And you end up with 22.2 .2 meters per second. And we have to do the same thing, exactly the same thing for 100 kilometers per hour. So I'm just going to put dittos in there. And we're going through the same process, that is 100 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, or 100 divide, divided by 3.6. And to do that, 27.8 meters per second. And so there we go. And we're ready to start looking at equations and seeing where we can go from here. Is there an equation where we can solve for acceleration with what we know here, um, in other words, including whatever we want, except for probably D. So we take a look at our formula sheet, and one that jumps out to me would be VF equals V naught plus AT. And um, there are other ways to do it, as per usual. So uh, if this isn't your way, that's fine. Um, but it is a pretty nice direct way to do it. So we'll solve for the A minus V naught from both sides. And let's flip the sides. So we end up with AT equals and the V naughts cancel out. And we end up with VF minus V naught. And I guess one more step, we're still solving for the A. So we'll cancel out the T's. And we're left with A is equal to VF minus V naught all over T. And we're ready to go. And this is how you should be laying out your work in showing the equation that you're planning to use and then manipulating it. And now we're at the point where we can plug in some numbers. So we end up with 27.8 for our V final, 22.2 .2 for our V initial, and our time is 12. 
And so calculate that out. And depending on whether you kept everything in your calculator or rounded like we did here and worked it out, uh, you'll come up with 0 0.46 meters per second or 0 0.47 meters per second. Oh, meters per second squared uh, acceleration. And let's double check that our units make sense. We have meters per second on the top. We have seconds on the bottom. Uh, so meter per second squared. Yeah, that looks great. And one final thing to check is our sig figs. And so we look back up at our original question. And here there was a, a decimal at the end of that. So that's two sig figs and two here. And we end up with three there, so minimum of two. So our final answer should be two sig figs. So um, leaving it as 0.46 or 0.47 is perfectly good. And we're done with that one.